Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing. Right here, I had a question, please. Yes. So um, I was going through the article that you posted, and um, you said something which I found quite interesting. And we've sort of discussed it here, where you say, idealism is beautiful to look at and carry on one's head, but as a generation, we must learn to be pragmatic. And I'm looking at someone like Osun Tijani. He's a technocrat and always worked in the private sector and worked with international bodies that do <laughs> things very differently from how we do things here. And I'm wondering if, this, in spite or despite his credentials, that he may find it difficult to, you know, for us to see those things. He may find it difficult to make it... Um, to navigate the water to, Yes, the and then we would see what he's bringing to the table. How do you see that? So a, a good way to, to see the future is to look at what is happening in the present. So in that national, at the National Assembly during his, 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 his um, clearing or screening, one thing happened that you can project into the future. The politicians, and I don't just mean the politicians, the politicians that are invested in Ashwaju's success, the president's success, they will find a way to help him navigate the politics. That is not to say that he, 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 can't, he shouldn't learn some things for himself. He has to, like negotiating with civil servants, let me just say that it's, it's not that easy versus negotiating with the, these people that you mentioned that you mm -hmm. used to work with. But when you appoint someone as a politician, a president or a governor or chief of staff, all the people around, the, the people that get the politics, you also have, have a responsibility to build a system that helps them thrive. Especially you knowing that politics will always get in the way of ability, of intentions, of everything. In the same way when you become a president, no matter your intention, Barack Obama, when you read his book, it's basically a book of frustration <laughs> of what I could not do. More or less, that's the mm -hmm. submission. Because you, you say you have presidential powers, but there's no president, nobody gets to be president on account of themselves alone. It takes a lot of balancing, a lot of give and take and all of that. And those things come to moderate How you in office. I but I think Bosu will do well, especially because the, the government is committed to, and they have no choice. If we really want to disrupt governance, technology is central to that. We talk about fighting corruption, for instance. Fighting corruption is a waste of time. If you build, if you build a system yes. that affords for transparency, a system that autom 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 um, autom um, automates accountability, right. the rest of it is just you Which just is what he did press in Lagos. and play, right? It's just press and play. Yeah. But this crude way of fighting corruption, you, you get some results. But if you want to disrupt, you have yeah. to build something that automates okay. the system. Okay, let me come and to I you. think that's what Bosun hopefully will offer. So, um, oh, before you ask your question, I have Omoyeli from Mikorodu. Thanks for calling, Omoyeli. Hello, good morning. Good morning, good morning I'm madam. Calling, but this is, this, it is not about the first time caller or not, but I just want to appreciate you and your guests on the table now. That's uh, Mr. Jaffe. Is it Jaffe or more? Or more yes. Dua? yes. So the one thing, one thing we should know about is that when you are competent of anything, you can go to places, and that is the reason too that that Bosu Tijani. That is the reason why the the Senate consider it a point of inviting him, of celebrating him. Either we like it or not, they are celebrating him because he know what he's doing and he know what he's talking about. And it is the competency we are asking our youth to do. As Murayo, I still want to come and see you personally by myself. I enjoy you. I enjoy all the ladies on your, your view. That we are talking of competency. When we are talking of competency, copy, if you are competent enough, you will eat with the evil, not even the president, you can eat with the, 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 the super, the super, the super. Super president. Okay, <laughs> I love the monologue. <laughs> Thank you very much, madam. Yes, so, um, earlier this year, I went to Qatar. And um, we left our phone in the car. They brought it back because we could track. Um, I was told that you can't steal because there are cameras everywhere. They monitor your behavior. And based on your behavior, when you go and collect loan, they will tell you that because you go to the bar every day, they are worried that you may not be able to pay back the loan because they know what you do, how you spend your money. So when you were talking about how tech would help us to change can be a major change driver in the country. I 100% agree. Mariah said it, we all support that. But knowing where we stand as a country now, the myriad of problems we're facing, which would you, what, what are the top three um, issues you would feel the president best address? He has already done two, which we are feeling. 
removal mm -hmm. of subsidy mm -hmm. and um, deregulating um, Remo uh, and then the, um, floating, Naira. floating the Naira, yeah. and we're feeling it's a painful process for Nigerians. But what would you think would cause us to have a meaningful change and growth in our economy? Yeah, off the top of my head, I would go for things that when you solve them, they affect other things. Mm -hmm. um, they have a multi dimensional, multi layered effect. So, for instance, we need to scale up the country, we need to scale up our population. I didn't use education intentionally because people have a limited view of education. What education means. So it could be TV, you know, vocational, mm. um, STEM, all of that thing that ensures that we have a skilled population. If you want to build a Fort Mellon bridge today, you're going to have to import a lot of these skills, including so-called manual skills. Mm -hmm. So we need to skill up the population. What that does is that it helps us. There are jobs flying all over the world. There are jobs looking to leave China because China is now more expensive. China is old, but they cannot come and patch here. Mm. Even though we have the population, yeah, but if your skills. population was skilled, those jobs would automatically come. Mm. Right now, one of the things that are helping our economy is actually that our young people can attract jobs from abroad, but that number is not scaled. So we need to scale those things, and I'm hoping that um, the government is able to do that. The president has already done two things that also have a lot of consequential effects, which is the removal of the subsidy. It's a structural problem, and it's going to have a lot of multi-dimensional effects. The, the dollar floating, mm. That's also going to have a multidimensional effect. One thing that we don't say enough that needs to be said is the land um, administration, um, because that also moderates capital. In the way that the fact that you have money to buy land doesn't mean you're going to really be able to get it. We need to devolve land administration, and we need to make it easy for somebody who has the resources to buy land right. and other forms of capital mm. to do it. And our, our, our you didn't talk about system. power. All right. Let me talk. So I mean, you said three. I, I, I could go. I could say <laughs> well, ten. Go, let, let me take Joseph. He's been holding for a while. Good morning, Joseph. Thanks for calling. Yeah. Good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I really appreciate you for your programs and uh, your guests. You guys are doing well. I'm a first-time caller as well. Mm. Uh, I want to really talk about uh, Tijani. Tijani, I really uh, like his courage. Number one, uh, he criticized the government, but if I were to uh, be uh, President Nubu in Tinubu shoes, probably I may mean, I mean not have considered him, probably the kind of person that I am. But on the other hand, we are really thank President Tinubu because he was somebody that can actually solve problems. Because the most things in Nigeria, or we need as a youth or as a Nigerian, people that can factor out possibility, like uh, um, the uh, Tijani of his uh, as a person, actually talked out on Nigeria. He can criticize, uh, let, let's say, an individual. He may, but talking down on Nigeria is very, right. very bad on the other okay. side. But I really thank his skills. Thank you very much, Joseph. I'll come to you, Toby, in a second. But there's a, there's a message that came here from somebody. I will not mention his name. He said, Mariah, I am an APC youth, and I'm quite disappointed in what's going on. Um, I don't have a personal problem with them appointing Bosum, the CC Hub guy. However, um, does it mean that in the coming weeks we're going to see appointments go to people like Aisha Yesufu, uh, Dr. Obi, Ndikato, <laughs> Peter Obi and others? They will be giving them ambassadorial jobs to uh, Iraq, Kuwait and other places. What's going to happen to those of us who actually did work? So that's the concern of many young people who are under the party because usually the mentality is you worked or you did you, you, you support and you're qualified. They're likely to give you an opportunity to serve. Many of them feel like they haven't, they are, they are being sidelined because in, in the presidency trying to be magnanimous, might start bringing all his enemies and giving them opportunities to serve. What do you think about that? <clears throat> Before I go straight to that, it's important I also add, um, you need to, we need to know our numbers um, with respect to data. You can't really do development without your data. We need to know our numbers, our Still identity. Tech. We need to know ourselves. Power is essential. It powers everything then we need to know the power of technology. We need to deploy technology to make change happen. It was important for me to add uh, those ones. Mm. For this uh, particular person, I understand their views and I respect it. And I think that they have a right to feel like that. But one thing we must understand is that Nigeria cannot satisfy all of us at the same time. <laughs> it's impossible. And when I say Nigeria, the United States, so, so don't even get it twisted. It's not about poverty. It's mm. about reality. Mm. That a system cannot satisfy, especially a system of 200 million people. Okay, worst case scenario, maybe 180 million people. We, we, all of us cannot be... Uh, one of the things I heard that was profound in the Senate was one of the ministerial nominees said he was the first person from a senatorial zone to be, uh, to be nominated as minister since 99. Mm. 
And it speaks to the, to the vastness of our country. It speaks to the numbers. It speaks to the many nationalities and many interests. And the truth of the matter is not all of those. Let me not even speak to Nigeria. Let me speak to APC. Not all the interests in the APC Can be will be satisfied. It's always going to be a balancing system. And trust me, whoever is in charge, those of us that do the speaking, those of us that are outside that are waiting for them to do something, we have a right to say, do this, do that. Whoever is in charge lives with the headache every morning and every <laughs> night. Because they also want to continue to be in power. Yeah. So if they could, they would actually satisfy everyone. But mm. they can't. They can't. So if you really love this president, as an APC member, and I assume that you do, and you want them to succeed, then you trusted them with your mandate. You have to trust them with your judgment. Mm. You have to trust that they are doing the best to get the best result. Because at the end of, every, at the, end of the day, no president wants to fail, really. Right, right. Especially in your first time. You don't want to fail because you know that you're still going to have to trade yeah. your success or failure to, exactly. to, to ask for a, a new exactly. mandate. Mm. Okay, let me take Pastor Labode and come to you, Toby. Pastor Labode, you're there. Thanks for calling. You're live. Oh, I'm so sorry we lost that call. Mm -hmm. Come and talk, talk away. Okay, so I'm really excited about this nomination. But I want you to paint a picture for the average Nigerian as to what to expect if but Dr. Bosun Tijani gets into because you know we see these system failures in different areas yeah. so can you paint okay i'm looking forward to in xyz um, number of months your xyz process is going to be this i just want you to paint that picture <laughs> mm -hmm. so that we That's understand what to do because yeah, I'm not, not, not Bosu yeah. is in the best position mm -hmm. to answer that question, but I'm going to answer it as a citizen, as a yeah. regular citizen. I'm not going to. Put, I'm going to try not to put him under pressure. <laughs> um, but on, on account of where he's coming from and what he's done, and Bosu has done some big things. Look, yeah. let's not get carried away. Bosu, I met Bosu, I think, in 2011, yeah. and. Look, it's, it's been phenomenal what he's done. I don't want to start selling. I mean, he's been sold. That's why. No, go ahead, read it. Watch the screen. Right, he's done some extra. Your CV, his CV cannot capture, and you know this thing. CVs don't capture these things. Yeah. He's done some extraordinary things. I believe that if the system does not moderate him too much, the system will moderate him. There's nothing they can do about it. Okay. The system is even already moderating him. Okay. But if the mm. system does not moderate him too much, I think that will, and apart from whatever ministry he manages, if he's able to also influence other ministries and other aspects of, governments, of governance, I see a situation where government services will be in the hands of the people with respect. I don't have to go to the marriage registry to pay. I can do, every, I can do virtually, not everything, but most things for starters from home. A system where this will, the battle against corruption has to become automated. Mm. It can't be buru buru. It can't be <laughs> bah, 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 breaking down doors. It has to become automated. When it is automated, you just tell the person, see what you did, see what you did. Is it I'll be pleading, uh, give me two years, I'll yeah. confess. You know, and then you have a, you have a negotiation. Yeah. I think that he's able to influence all of that. I think that he's able to create a situation where we create tech, super tech hubs across the country in the way that he couldn't do because of the limited resources he has and the fact that he didn't have government power. I see a situation where it completely helps and when I say he, I don't just mean him as a person. I mean the system, system you know, I, that it completely helps to ensure that our, our broadband yeah. spread the across the country yeah. penetration gets to happen and Nigeria can get to 100%, if, if not more. I see, mm. I think a good model for Nigeria, even though Estonia is quite a small country, but a good model for Nigeria would be Estonia. And I know that Bosun knows about Estonia. All right. To try as much as possible to get what we can get in the beginning and then build a foundation for the future. And then trust that those that come after that can build on top of it. All right, let me take this call from Debo, calling from Isolo. Thanks for calling, Debo. Yeah, good morning. Good um, morning, you're live. Um, the first time for all that, after 10 years. Welcome to the show, after yeah, 10 years. <laughs> Thank you very much. Big two things that I want to put there, as far as uh, Tijan is concerned. A lot has been said. A lot has been said concerning, uh, concerning him. Everybody is... Uh, has a right to be angry about the system in this country, but we must be civil on how we approach issues. I'm sure if he has a father in the city, he will not refer to them as no wrong. I don't have any objection to his nomination anyway. Then the second aspect is this issue of technocrat, of course. Um, sometimes we wish away the background of those who were expect us. Take somebody like Toyota, for instance. Everybody will regard him as a politician because he has served the one term governor, but check his background as a chief executive officer of, uh, of a finance company.
So before you get into court, I, I, I believe Morales tomorrow he can be appointed, maybe as commissioner. By the time he's as commissioner, then he now has to go up as a minister. Everybody starts saying, okay, um, the other woman in the diaspora commission, is she a politician or a technocrat? Oh. At the pedagogy I'm talking about now. So sometimes we need to do a critical background check. All right. It's just a Thank you very much, Debo, for your views. Maria was going to say Yes, I was going to say that going forward, you know, with all the expectations that we have in Nigeria, one thing, you know, apart from fuel subsidy, we've talked about that, is power. Mm -hmm. I mean, even these tech hubs and whatever it is we're talking okay. about, they not, you know, mean anything. What um, plans would you suggest, you know, to governments? Because they're watching, like, mm. immediate things. Short term. Short term, <laughs> mid term, yeah. long term. And maybe for them to also understand the impact it can have if it's not, if it's not you know, hurriedly done or if it's not done in, you know, right, right now. Well, unfortunately, power is one of those issues that are very political. Um, Why? It, and there's a catch-22 situation with respect to power. So you see, and that's why I, I would never call myself an activist in that sense of this conventional activist. You see someone goes to protest that they want 24-hour power. Yeah. And they're carrying this placard, right? And on the side, they're also asking for cheap power. In mm. the world of today, you can't choose both mm -mm. of them. Or possible. Now, as a collective, as Nigerians, we're trying to choose both. For everything. We're asking for 24-hour power, and we're asking for cheap power. Unfortunately, we can't have both. To have 24-hour power, it will be expensive, because the people that want to invest need to make profit. Right now, government is subsidizing a lot of it. Even when they're trying to... Let's go the way we've done, we did with, with uh, four for, for a while on, until they finally just let go. We haven't let go with, with power. For us to have power, we must sell at market value, at market rate. And for that to happen, then when you do that, people, private sector money will come. By the way, Nigeria has tried too long, especially Africa, we've tried too long to develop via government. You so can't do wait. that. You need to find a balance between the private sector funding, private sector investment, and government moderation and government regulation. Okay. But the thing with private sector is that they need, they need profit. But profit is exactly why the world is where it is today, where we're moving forward, where you have better phones, where you have better, better eyelashes, better wigs, and better <laughs> everything. It's profit. Profit is an incentive for people to think, to sit, and make things happen. Somebody said something about, they said, the person said, JJ, they are going to sell, they are going to sell Ajakuta to themselves. I said, what's the worst case scenario? I said, this is the worst case scenario. They sell it for one naira. I think it's probably worth $30 billion or $20 billion. I said, they, they sell it for one naira. That's the worst case scenario, right? They sell it to themselves for one naira. I said, but what happens after that? Great the job. government doesn't get to budget for that thing every year. That Anymore. thing is not giving anything out, but we're paying pensions, we're paying salaries. It has no incentive to create anything. So, as it is, it's a disaster. So really and truly, there are some government assets, if it was possible. Don't do it, though, because somebody, somebody, nobody should quote me, but if it were possible, <laughs> if I was the one, not as president, if, 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 if it belonged to me, according to the way they are doing today, I'll just say, I dash you. <laughs> because then what happens is that, the I won't dash you because I need to create an incentive, yeah. obviously. Then what happens is that you have to create, you have to create products yeah. because you need to make money. And, and to make money, you have to hire people. And guess what? When you hire people, and you, you start that industry, you create new industries that come on the back of what you've done. The people that make tea, right? There are people that make the bags that the tea go into. There are people that create the branding around the tea. There people, like, when you build an industry, many, it builds an entire ecosystem, a chain of value hmm. that sometimes you, don't, you do not even imagine or think about. goes back to so what if we was did with telecoms. three months, what would you do? So you, you, you First just of all, you go. need to unbundle the yeah. system. You need to unborn. The, the privatization that we did was such a mess. We had, we had a reference in the telecoms privatization, and we did power, and we messed. How can you privatize and you're spending about two trillion Supporting naira them. again? Like, that's, that's a contradiction. It should never have happened. Yeah. So we need to look at this thing again. Uh, but ultimately, ultimately, we need to let power be handled by private sector. Let profit determine access to power. We can then find a way to help people the most vulnerable, maybe like isolate. And that's why we have to do our data. Where are the poor people living, like most poor people? You can find a way to subsidize for those mm. people. But there's no reason why somebody that has four SUVs is being subsidized, like in anything, really. Mm. No yeah. reason. Absolutely. Except maybe you, you find a way to incentivize their production capacity so that they can produce more. But there should be no word like subsidy. 
for somebody yeah. that has two SUVs. If yeah. you go to the Netherlands, everybody is riding bicycles. If you see anybody with a big SUV, it's likely that it's they just started. Through. Because by the time they learn, they will go and buy a small car. <laughs> like, we need to right. think about these things. There are consequences to everything that we do. We have to wrap up. I think that's all we can take. Oh, wow, Thank, you Thank you very much. Complete like. We have to bring it back. We have to. I had a great you, time here. Yeah. Oh. yeah, good to have you. Okay, that's all we can take on today's show. Hope you learned a few things as we have. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.